I'll be I'll be back tonight. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Hey, maybe you can try to um, practice Spanish with me. I, I was thinking the same thing. I will not speak English uh, tonight. Hablame español. Just. Uh, te ayudo. Todo, todo, todo en español. Todo en español. Todo en español. Gracias. Hasta, hasta, hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye. Hey, take it easy. Okay. Those are the magic words you want to hear when you're in Mexico to study Spanish. Hablame en español. Te ayudo. Hey, that was music to my ears. Welcome to Travels with Lobo, coming to you from Merida, Mexico, in the Yucatan. This is vlog number three. My purpose in being here was to take Spanish classes, and I chose my first school as being La Calle, on Calle 57, in Merida. Now, the classes were four hours a day, which was pretty intensive, but, but it left me time to discover things in Merida, like today, the market, which, as you can see from the map, is only a short walk from the Zocalo, that's the green area, and uh, the cathedral that I spotlighted in vlog number one. The market is called Mercado Lucas de Galvez. Side of the market. It's located right in the center of the city. Only uh, a couple of hundred meters from the Grand Place, the Grand Plaza with the Zocalo. Merida, Yucatan. I'm here at the Mercado Lucas de Galvez, which is a downtown market. Markets are always interesting, so let's have a look. So I'm starting off with uh, a part of the market that was not really near the front door, but uh, a part of the market that fascinated me nonetheless. And uh, that was the pets section. Mascotas in Spanish. A lot of it was uh, birds of various kinds. Uh, as you can see here, finches, uh, budgies, budgies. Who didn't have a budgie? as a kid, more budgies, pet food, and uh, my favorite, ducks. I love ducks. Uh, rabbits, rabbits. With Easter coming up, rabbits would be a top seller. I'm now back in Victoria, British Columbia, and just yesterday there was a story in the paper with uh, Easter coming up to cautioning people not to get rabbits. Rabbits or Easter bunny take a lot of care a lot of care and surprisingly they reproduce every month so people get tired of them and just dump them off at the university grounds or by uh, by speedways they become a problem for the whole community as i continue to look at rabbits now let's get around to the abundant fruits and vegetables which mexico is so abundantly blessed with a lot of our fruits and vegetables here in Canada, of course, come from uh, from Mexico. So it's it's nice to see this uh, in Mexico. And here's the tortillas. Mexico is tortillas. Every meal has to have tortillas. And there they are. You should see them being produced under tremendously hot conditions. It's basically slave labor, but it has to be produced because it's part of every meal. <laughs> Leave 
limon, Spanish for lemon. Uh, these look green, but they are lemons. A lime, on the other hand, is called a lima, sopa de lima, which is famous in the Yucatan. There was many an evening when that was my evening supper, sopa de lima. It was so delicious. Another part of the market that was delightful were the fishmongers, or the fish market. Hola! What did you bring? What did you bring? Fish, people, fish. Vivo, pescados, vivo. Pescados, oh, yeah. vivo. Pescado vivo, come Pesca. México. En México se come pescado vivo. Ahí está. Pescado vivo. Pescado vivo. En México. Here's something that looks uh, a lot like uh, some type of a shark. Small one at that, but a shark. Mexico, of course, is known for its spices, and they're all hot, 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 very hot, very hot, salsa habanero. Chiles. Nothing is more associated with Mexico than chiles. That's peppers, hot peppers. And here's something that's made from a platania tree. More spices. And my favorites, frijoles, beans, beans. I love eating beans. I've only been here a couple of days. And there's one thing that's safe to eat, it's beans. Beyond that, I'm not sure. I could have walked in there for uh, at least half an hour to walk every aisle, but it's basically the same thing. Wow, look at these guys here. What are they doing? Shoe repair? Uh, sewing. Shoes? Yeah, shoes. Sandals. If you don't want to throw them away, get them repaired here. Inside, outside, just an uh, incredible mix of people. And just by coincidence, I come upon where I've been eating the last two nights in this outdoor cafe, outdoor restaurant. Right along here. By the way, it's no coincidence that this restaurant is in the colors of Coca-Cola and the chairs are labeled Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is still king in Mexico, unfortunately.
as one gentleman told me, it's not a meal unless you have Coca-Cola. Mexico also has a huge diabetes problem, largely because of the soft drinks. So last evening, I ate right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. This uh, gentleman back here. He speaks English. This, hey, how you doing? This gentleman here speaks English. A little bit. I just buy. A little bit. Just because yeah. I grew up in Salt Lake City. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be, I'll be back tonight. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Hey, maybe you can try to um, practice Spanish with me. I, I was thinking the same thing. I will not speak English uh, tonight. Habla me español. Just. Uh, te ayudo. Todo, I'll help you out. To, todo en español. Todo en español. Todo es español. Gracias. Hasta, hasta, hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye. Hey, take it easy. Okay. Now, Luke was from Salt Lake City, and that was a tip off. Salt Lake City means Mormon, and yes, he was Mormon. And he had spent time in missionary work in Spanish-speaking countries. That's why he spoke Spanish. He also told me he spent two years on missionary work in Russia and spoke Russian to some extent. Now, surprisingly, uh, he was here in this restaurant to learn how to run a Mexican restaurant because he wanted to open up a Mexican restaurant in Salt Lake City. Nothing Mormon about that, but he was a great, great guy. What else would you expect from a Mormon?